Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting this Thursday's edition on its 10th day of February 2022. Up first, we've got hazardous weather graphic. There we go. Got a wind chill warning continuing there for the uh, Yukon Flats area. Otherwise, uh, winter weather advisory out for the Nalato Hills are Eastern Norton Sound tonight into tomorrow. Also a winter weather advisory out for the uh, Bristol Bay area as well for snow and areas of blowing snow several inches expected with gusty winds reducing visibilities to a half mile or less. That same sort of condition going on as well up there along the Nalato Hills and Norton Bay on down toward uh, Stebbins and uh, those areas, St. Michael, and also for the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast and the northern Panhandle, same sort of thing. A winter weather advisory out for uh, snow, occasional blowing snow uh, tonight into tomorrow. And from there, we'll go on to, or up to the north, still a wind chill warning out tonight for the eastern Arctic coast. Wind chills to uh, 75 below zero and winter wind chill advisories out for the central and western Arctic coast, winter weather advisories as well. Uh, low wind chill, snow blowing snow, and visibilities at times reduced down to a half mile or less. And from there, satellite imagery showing one band moving up to the north there, still kind of curving back around to the uh, central eastern Arctic coast, a little bit of moisture up there and cloudiness that helped uh, push the temperatures a little warmer than they had been over the last couple of days. But that's starting to kick out of the area there. And then some areas of clouds across the eastern interior there along the Yukon River, Eagle, up and then downstream there a ways. But not too bad over interior Alaska. A lot of clear skies, south central Alaska. But the Cirrus Shield with the next system rolling northward into uh, the inlet, uh, Southern Cook Inlet with the next system, south of Kodiak Island, a couple of low centers, kind of a complex low system there. Uh, south of the Alaska Peninsula, a lot of moisture and increasing wind and rain pushing into Kodiak Island as well as the Alaska Peninsula and uh, starting to get some warmer temperatures, warmer air trying to take hold of the southeast Bering Sea around the Pribilofs, eastern Aleutian areas with the cold air back to the northwest and to the west now and the warmer air making a push to the north. Dry day over the southeast coast today and uh, high pressure responsible for that, about 1,038 millibar ridge there over the southern southeast coast. Uh, showers pretty much shut off. There were some scattered rain and snow showers over the northern panhandle today and also over the Copper River Basin and up along the Alaska Range, but wind and precipitation on the increase. Kodiak Island, actually along the Alaska Peninsula, spreading some rain and snow up along the south coast of the Kenai Peninsula uh, late and uh, trying to work into Prince William Sound. Low pressure bringing uh, winds and rain and snow to the eastern Aleutians and back to the western Aleutians. The cold air wrapping back in there uh, around uh, as the warm air pushes into the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, the cold air kind of retreating back to the west there. So precipitation in the form of snow with quite gusty northerly winds, gale force northerlies there from about ADAC westward to roughly Amchitka. Then the winds lighten up, but snow showers continue all the way to the Commodorskis. Arctic Ridge in over the uh, western interior and central interior, keeping it dry and generally below zero. And a weak trough uh, clipping the eastern Arctic coast, kind of kicking the winds up there with uh, stronger gusts uh, for the uh, area like Barter Island, Kaktovik, over toward demarcation point with some snow and blowing snow up there, but uh, additional amounts pretty light. Looking at tonight, that tapers off, winds lighten up, and that system's gone up there and high pressure. Uh, remains kind of ridging from the Russian Far East across northern Alaska into uh, northwest territories of Canada. While warmer air and clouds and moisture make inroads into southern Alaska as that frontal boundary pushes northward, definitely crossing into Bristol Bay. Winter weather advisory tonight for snow, several inches expected with gusty winds, lower visibilities in areas. Could see gusts to anywhere 25 to 40, 45 miles an hour, especially along the coast, will be see the lowest or highest winds, lowest conditions there. And snow for the Pribilofs crossed all the southern Bering Sea. Milder temperatures will make for rain and snow over the uh, central eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula with increasing snow on the North Gulf Coast pushing into southern Alaska, Copper River Basin, and some of that spilling north of the Alaska Range late tonight into the uh, Northway Toke area, possibly, or not, staying south of Eagle there 
but getting into the 40 mile country, maybe Delta Junction, but those amounts north of the Alaska Range will be very light. And uh, moisture, snow or rain and snow, uh, depending on your elevation and uh, proximity to the coastline there for the southeast coast, but amounts to the south will be pretty light there with that 1,040 millibar surface ridge holding on, but some overrunning moisture will probably spread in even to the southern areas toward morning. And for the day Friday, periods of rain, moderate to possibly heavy at times on the coastline of the Panhandle, especially the north and central coast with a mixture of precipitation inland areas, again, depending on elevation, time of day, and your latitude. Lighter amounts of precipitation down to the south toward Dixon entrance, but still looks like a rather wet day there, but wind's not a problem. A little brisk on the coast, possible gale force winds. It's definitely small craft advisory level winds. And easterly, probably a narrow band of gales as that front presses up to the North Gulf Coast across Middleton Island, bringing the uh, moisture into the North Gulf Coast. And you can see uh, light snow pushes farther northward north of the Alaska Range, like I spread into the uh, mid and upper Tanana Valley, 40 mile country now to Eagle and beyond, but staying south of the Brooks Range, where it'll be mostly clear tomorrow and cold again for the North Slope, variable clouds, uh, probably a dry or will be a dry day with light winds for the Arctic coast. Winds across the Northern Bering Sea getting a little brisk, especially along the Southwest coast, could see gusts 35 to possibly as high as 50 miles an hour, a place like Cape Hermans off Tuxuk Bay, but lighter down along the Cuscoam Delta coast and definitely in Bristol Bay, not much of a gradient there. Light variable winds over the Alaska Peninsula and Eastern Aleutians. Another low farther to the west, again that uh, colder air getting pushed back to the uh, west. So it looks like the rain snow line will be just west of Adak and then just snow from Amchitka out to Shimiana too with a mixture of precipitation. It should stay cold enough for snow for the Pribilofs, but rain for the eastern Aleutians and probably mostly rain, especially at sea level for Kodiak Island in that south-southeast flow, especially behind the front. And then for the day on Saturday, we've got uh, low pressure moving into the uh, western interior there, just south of the Yukon River, or right over the yukon Cusquam Delta. Kind of hard to discern the exact low center there, only 1,014 millibars, so not particularly strong, but a lot of moisture coming inland. Areas of snow, pretty widespread, kind of a lot of snow uh, in terms of, a, of it being expansive or extensive as, a, as opposed to being heavy, just a lot of a widespread area of light snow from the Brooks Range southward to the interior right on down to the Kenai Peninsula Cook in it. That'll be mixed with snow, or I'm sorry, mixed with rain. As you get down toward the coastline, North Gulf Coast, uh, some areas like Cordova, see just rain, mixture of precipitation for Seward, for example, Yakutat right on the rain snow edge, and then some light moisture, leftover showers, rain or snow in the northern Panhandle and Canal Glacier Bay area over toward the eastern border, just rain showers over the southern southeast coast, but light with light winds, maybe even some afternoon clearing there. Best chance we're seeing some clearing will be up over the north slope in the eastern Arctic coast into the Bering Strait area, but temperatures will be below zero up in those areas. And moving on to the uh, lows for tonight, uh, near zero for the Copper River Basin, 20 to 25 below in the Cuscombe Valley north, but down towards Sleep, Muther, Sparavine around five below. 10 to 20 south central Alaska, mid 30s Kodiak Island, upper 20s to lower 30s for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow near 40 around Kodiak, uh, 25 to 35, Bristol Bay, and in the mid-20s for the Susitna, Manuska Valley, Kenai Peninsula, but warmer down towards Seward and Homer into the mid-30s there. 15 to 20 for the highs, Copper River Basin, mid-30s along the eastern North Gulf Coast, and mid-30s to lower 40s for the Panhandle. And then the Sunday, Saturday morning lows, uh, a little milder, just in the 20s, south central Alaska, and still falling below zero over northern Cuscoam Valley. Lows around 40 in some areas of the uh, southeast coast, pretty mild there. Highs in the lower to mid 40s for the southeast coast, mid 20s inland areas of southern Alaska to 35 to 40, Seward to Homer, mid 30s for Valdez, and upper 30s for Kodiak Island. Up north, another cold night. Uh, 25 to 45 below, north of the Alaska Range there, followed by highs uh, staying below zero, and then morning lows back down to uh, 25 to 40 below, say, and highs rising a shade above zero for the, ten, or for the Fairbanks area. Out west, lows in the teens. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
Taking a look at the aviation forecast, starting with flying weather for Friday morning, looking at a couple low pressure systems, one out there in the Western Aleutians, and a couple others near, one near the Alaska Peninsula and one pulling into the Gulf. We'll be watching that Friday and Saturday, but otherwise some IFR conditions spread out through much of the Gulf region into the southern Cook Inlet over into Bristol Bay and out through the southern Bering Sea. Otherwise, some marginal conditions there in the eastern interior and along the eastern north slope. For Friday afternoon, again, we're going to be watching the system pull into the Gulf with IFR conditions spread out from the northern panhandle through the Gulf region over in Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay region, and into the southern Gulf region. Otherwise, some I have our conditions over there in the Western Aleutians, some marginal conditions along the North Slope and Eastern Interior. For Saturday morning, looking at I have our conditions, again, as this system pulls into now the Prince William Sound region on Saturday morning, I have our conditions through much of the Panhandle into the southern mainland and out through the YK Delta. Also some lingering IFR conditions out there in the southern Bering Sea. Marginal conditions through portions of the interior and looks like decent weather along the north slope for flying conditions. For Saturday afternoon flying weather, looking at system finally dissipating. IFR conditions spread out through much of the southwest, otherwise marginal conditions through much of the southern mainland and lingering IFR conditions through portions of the Panhandle, and again, some decent looking flying weather for the No Slope and into the Brooks Range, and also portions of the Aleutians. <clears throat> for past conditions on Friday, Anik Tuik VFR decreased into marginal, same for Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill in the Southern Alaska Range, IFR conditions de increasing to marginal conditions down there, rainy, marginal, with IFR conditions expected on the eastern entrance. Windy, VFR conditions that you get into more of the central Alaska range. Isabel Pass, marginal. Mentasta, VFR, decreasing, decreasing to marginal with marginal conditions on the southern entrance. And Tanita, <clears throat> marginal, improving to VFR. Portage, IFR, improving to marginal and Chilkoot and White Marginal decreasing to IFR conditions on Friday. For freezing levels, Friday morning, looking at the surface freezing level cutting across the Panhandle into the Northern Gulf, down near Kodiak Island, and south of the Alaska Peninsula and Aleutians. And again, this is for Friday morning, elevated freezing levels, anywhere between two and 8,000 feet in the Gulf of Alaska. Icing conditions on Friday, looking at between Three and 10,000 feet with areas of considerable moderate in portions of the Panhandle in and into the southern Cook Inlet just south of the Kenai Peninsula. Also between five and 10,000 feet with considerable areas of moderate there in the southern Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians. Otherwise, some isolated moderate spread out through the southern mainland into the Bering Sea. For the jet stream on Friday, with that low out there in the Gulf, looking at a jet stream cutting into the Gulf region, up into the YK Delta, 145 to 155 knots there. Otherwise, some westerly flow across much of the mainland, anywhere between 16 to 65 knots across the eastern mainland. Four 9,000 foot winds on Friday. A couple low pressure systems there, bringing some counterclockwise flow around those systems. Otherwise, some southwesterly flow into the southwest and Bristol Bay region with 40 to 45 knots there. Otherwise, some more westerly winds are cutting across the southern end of the mainland and into the panhandle with some areas of getting into 60 to 65 knots there. And otherwise, across portions of the interior, westerlies to 30 knots. For 3,000 foot winds on Friday, again, those low pressure systems show up there, kind of clockwise flow around those systems. Otherwise, across much of the mainland, variable. Conditions there at again 3,000 feet, otherwise westerlies into the panhandle to 45 knots. For turbulence on Friday, below 3,000 feet with areas of isolated moderate to considerable moderate there, otherwise below 6,000 feet with areas across much of the southern mainland into the northern Gulf with again below 6,000 feet with considerable moderate areas. 
What's up, star nerds? Trace here, and this week we can see three planets at sunrise, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Here's how. Hit the sky around 6 a.m. and look southeast toward the coming sunrise. Venus will rise first, shining super bright, then Mars, and at 7 a.m., Mercury. Mercury will be a challenge to see, as it is way dimmer than Venus and might get lost in a hazy sunrise. But as the days roll on, Mercury will get easier to spot as it gets further away from the sun, peaking at the highest altitude on the 12th. That morning, Mercury will peak at 11 degrees above the horizon. Don't worry, you don't need a compass. Just stretch out your arm and make a fist. That's about 10 degrees. If you can't make out Merc, you can still enjoy the conjunction of Venus and Mars up to its right. Mercury orbits the sun every 88 days, so you'll get another chance to spy on it. But in the meantime, keep looking up. The Yukon Flats National Wildlife Refuge is a refuge in Alaska. It's the third largest refuge in the National Wildlife Refuge system. North of Fairbanks, it's a vast ecosystem of wetlands. What drives this refuge are natural forces of fire, ice, and water. The Yukon Flats has got a really interesting history. Back in the late 50s, early 1960s, there was a proposal to dam the Yukon River down by Rampart, which is downstream of the Yukon Flats and it was a hydroelectric proposal. And so in order to assess the merits of that proposal, people got together because they were a little bit concerned about what the impacts might be on the Yukon Flats, the habitat, and all the people living within the Yukon Flats refuge. There's quite a few people living within the refuge. We have seven villages. So in order to figure out how special the Yukon Flats was, the Fish and Wildlife Service banded over 40,000 ducks within the Yukon Flats. And using the band return information, they found out that those ducks were using 45 of the 50 lower 48 states. They were using seven foreign countries, and they were using most of the provinces over in Canada, as well as all the major flyways down in the lower 48. And so that identified that the Yukon Flats was a special breeding area. And that information, along with a lot of other public information that was gathered during that whole process really ensured that the dam never did go in and thus the habitat was preserved. So what that did is it really highlighted the national importance of this area and how important conserving this particular area is for conserving many other natural areas in the lower 48 and even across the continent. Refuge because we have responsibility towards our future generations to leave land protected um, in the state that it is now. The Yukon Flats is a wild place. The ecosystem is intact and functioning and you can't find that very many places in the rest of the U.S. The Yukon Flats Refuge is among the most important places for ducks. So each spring, millions of ducks, and in addition to shorebirds and geese, raptors and loons, they all fly to the refuge to nest and rear their young. And the reason they are attracted to this area is because it has really enriched wetlands. There are lots of nutrients in the wetlands that provide a lot of food for the growing young. We also have a lot of um, predator, prey species like bears and black bears, grizzly bears, wolves. We also have a lot of moose and fur bearers that use the refuge. So overall, there's just a great diversity of both upland, lowland, and migratory bird species that use the refuge. Most people know the flats as a duck nursery, um, and that was one of the main purposes that was designed for, but a lot of recent research over the last decade has really illustrated how important it is to 
a variety of native endemic fish species for subsistence and recreational and commercial fisheries throughout the entire Yukon River Basin and out to supporting commercial fisheries out to the Bering Sea as well. So it, it, it supports a variety of different whitefish and salmon species, the northern pike, a uh, little bit of everything that people rely on as cultural identities but also for subsistence resources and where people go to, to recreate and enjoy being outside. So the type of recreation that you're going to find on Yukon Flats Refuge is very primitive. And what that often does is it gives people a complete break from some of the stresses of today's world. There are no cell phone towers out there, there are no roads, there are no trails. So any type of recreation that people have is entirely natural. The lands and waters within the Yukon Flats National Wildlife Refuge are open to the public to enjoy. And that's a really important tenant upon which the United States is built. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. I'm Peter Chan here to take the show home tonight and looking at what we have in our sea ice edge. Uh, the ice is going to continue to move southward as the wind component will be generally out of the north-northwest across the west side of the state. And we can see that uh, south and slightly westward advancement of the ice uh, compared to a couple days ago. So that'll be the trend. We'll look at the winds on the west side of the state here in a moment when it comes to the marine forecast. In the meantime, winds will be out of the southeast and south through the inner channels of the panhandle, 25 knots with gusts, 40 knot gales, and waves around five feet. The outer uh, coastal areas there along the Gulf, uh, 30 knots, lower half south of Sh Sitka, but we are looking for winds of 40 to 45 knots, Sitka on up through uh, Yakutat into the far north Gulf with waves uh, 12 to 14 feet or so. And then on Saturday, winds will be out of the southeast 15 to 20 knots throughout the uh, inner channels with waves 3-4 feet. The outer coast of the Gulf, uh, winds will be southeasterly 15 to 20 knots, waves generally around 9 to 10 feet. Across uh, the northwest portion of the Gulf, winds will be out of the east-northeast 35 to 40 knot gales, waves right around 14 feet. Northeasterly 25 knots in Prince William Sound with waves of about 6 feet and 45 knot gales there in the lower portion of Cook Inlet with waves perhaps as high as 15 feet. By Saturday, we see the winds out over the, along the northwest uh, Gulf, uh, south there of uh, the Kenai Peninsula, 25 to 30 knots, waves 10 to 12 feet. Uh, southerly 20 knots, three footers there in uh, Prince William Sound. And then uh, lower Cook Inlet West uh, winds 20 knots, waves six feet. Winds will be northeasterly on Friday in Shelikoff Strait, uh, 30 knots, waves 12 feet. But uh, as we uh, kind of a mixed bag, uh, as we drop down along the Alaska Peninsula, turn more to the north, as high as 25 knots north of Cold Bay with waves of eight feet. And then on Saturday, look for winds across the region, at least on the Pacific and Gulf side from the southwest and west around 20 to as high as 30 knots southeast of Kodiak Island. Waves out over uh, the North Pacific and open Gulf, 10 to 13 feet. And northwesterly, 15 knots on the Bering side with waves six feet near Cold Bay. Uh, across the eastern Aleutians on Friday, winds will be out of the northeast and east around 20 knots. And uh, you'll see an area of low pressure back toward Kiska with the clockwise circulation, 35 knot winds on the back side of that uh, near Kiska with 18 foot waves. And then as we get into Saturday, Kind of a mixed bag. Uh, we'll see winds picking up there across the west side of the state. Uh, east, eastern Aleutians, 20 to 25 knots, but turning to 45 knot gales to 50 to 55 knot storm force winds, particularly uh, from ADAC westward through Kiska and Shimia. And then looking at Friday's uh, marine forecast, we expect mainly northwest to north winds out over the ice covered areas of the west and southwest coasts. So that ice will want to push still toward the south and west a bit. And continuing on Saturday, winds out of the north-northwest 
around 20 to 30 knots over uh, the extensive ice there through the central uh, and especially uh, eastern and northern Bering Sea. And uh, as we take a look along the Arctic coast, winds will be out of the west at uh, 10 to 20 knots, Utgiatvik through uh, Kaktovik. And then as uh, the northwest coast, we'll see northwest or southwesterly winds around 10 knots, turning uh, more north-northwest 15 and accelerating to 25 knots on the north side there of St. Lawrence Island, where the ice remains firmly in place. Uh, for Saturday, winds should come down a bit more, 5 to 10 knots along the Arctic coast. And then again, turning more toward the north and northwest through the lower Chuck GC and accelerating 25 to 30 knots through the Bering States straight to the uh, north side of St. Lawrence Island and along the west side of uh, the Seward Peninsula, including Wales and Port Clarence. And looking at the weather map, high pressure is in place uh, across eastern Russia, north slope into the Canadian Arctic coast on Friday with a frontal system extending from just along the coast of the Panhandle, uh, the northern Gulf Coast down across the Alaska Peninsula back into the Aleutian chain with a couple of low centers, one out over the uh, central portion of the Alaska Peninsula and another one back toward the central Aleutians. And as we go into Saturday, we see that frontal system lifting a little farther north uh, with areas of primarily light precipitation along it. And uh, we do expect uh, uh, another load trying to creep up there uh, up from the North Pacific, uh, well south though of the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island as high pressure remains firmly entrenched there from eastern Russia across the North Slope into the Canadian Arctic coast. So that does it for tonight. Thank you for watching and be sure to join us tomorrow. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>